Armored Core 6 doesn't feel like a game that released in 2023. To me, it feels like a game that should have been released in 2003. Armored Core 6 feels like it would have fit very neatly on the shelf besides Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, and Ratchet and Clank. It doesn't feel like the other big AAA games that have released this year. It doesn't play like other AAA games. AAA gaming, meaning big budget gaming, has changed a lot in the last 20 years. There were three pretty high profile remakes and remasters released early this year that demonstrate just how much AAA gaming has changed. Dead Space, Resident Evil 4, and Metroid Prime remastered. I had an absolute blast with all three. I had more fun with these three games than almost any other game released this year. Now, Dead Space was released in 2008, and the remake still plays like a game released in 2008. Resident Evil 4 is even older, first released in 2005. Its remake saw a lot more changes to the gameplay than Dead Space's, but at its core, it still feels like a classic video game. Metroid Prime is over two decades old. It was first released all the way back in 2002, and the gameplay in its remaster was almost totally unchanged, and it still plays great. It's not only super fun, but it's more fun than a lot of games getting released today. Playing these three games in 2023, I realized that AAA gaming has lost something in the last two decades of game development. Or, more accurately, AAA gaming has gained way too many things. Nowadays, a lot of AAA games are bloated and top-heavy. They have gotten so big. Honestly, a lot of times I feel like AAA video games have gotten too big. Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok. So many AAA games have these massive, huge, sprawling open worlds. Worlds so large that most players will probably never see everything they have to offer. Hundreds of hours of content, incredible cinematic stories with cutscenes and acting, like something out of a big budget blockbuster movie, insanely detailed visuals, just gorgeous environments, better looking than anything I could have imagined a video game's graphics being as a kid. Gameplay that is really complicated, like so many different systems piled up on top of other systems, 10 different categories of things you can craft, RPG systems with dozens of different unlockable abilities, a hundred different ways you can approach every challenge. These games have huge, multi hundred million dollar budgets, and even bigger development times. Like, when is the next time we're gonna see another Zelda or God of War game? It's probably gonna be five years, six years, maybe even longer than that. Frankly, that's way too long. And as much as I love the way these series have been sort of reimagined in their newer releases, it is kind of a bummer that we'll probably never get another older style, smaller scale God of War or Zelda game ever again. Sometimes I actually feel really intimidated by AAA games. Maybe I'm just getting older and grumpier, but I don't want to have to learn how all these different new systems work every time I pick up a new game. And then here comes Armored Core 6, a AAA game in 2023, with no open world, no crafting, no complicated RPG mechanics, and it has a traditional mission structure. I cannot remember the last time I played a AAA video game with a traditional mission structure. It's been years. It's probably probably been over a decade. AAA games don't have missions anymore, and now that I've played Armored Core 6, I can't figure out why not. It's such a simple and straightforward way to get into the gameplay, and the missions themselves often feel like something out of an older game. The missions have these very simple objectives, like, hey, go blow up everything in this level. Okay, we will do. Happy to do it. I love blowing things up without having to travel across a giant map, without having to craft any bullcrap, without any loot or RPG mechanics, without any online multiplayer, without having to deal with anything other than the dinky enemy robots in front of you and the layered vertical obstacles in the environment. Armored Core 6 does have an extremely in-depth mech customization system, but it's also only as complicated as you want it to be. You can spend a ton of time specking the small details of your mech to confront every different challenge in the most 100% effective way, or you can do what I did and just 
just equip two machine guns and two bazookas and just freaking blow everything up. I played basically the entire game with the same loadout and I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. I had a blast. I've seen some people call this a flaw. They say that it's a flaw if you're able to play through the whole game without ever changing your mech design. Well, I totally 1000% disagree. I don't want to be forced to play with a kind of mech that I don't want to play with. If I want to experiment around with different kinds of combinations, then the system is there for me to do that. But if I don't want to, if I'm enjoying the combination I'm already using, then I can just keep using that too. That's totally cool. It's not a flaw for players to not have to use every single feature in your game to beat the game. I so very desperately wish I could just skip past certain features in other AAA games. For example, I love almost everything about the two Norse God of War games, but I don't give a flying freak about the inventory or crafting systems in either of those games, or about their skill trees. I don't care about making new armored loincloths, and I don't care about unlocking a new fancy twirl for my axe. If I could play the whole game without ever touching either of those mechanics, I absolutely never would. And I feel the same way about a hundred other features in a hundred other AAA games. These games could be way smaller. I didn't know I was waiting for a game like Armored Core 6 until I played Armored Core 6, a game that combines AAA production values with a classic gaming mindset, where it lets me just run around in a tank and blow things up. And that's the important thing, that's what sets Armored Core 6 apart from a lot of other classic inspired games. This isn't a game from some small indie team who are mimicking the gameplay of their favorite video games past. This is from one of the most successful AAA gaming developers in modern times. If you want to play video games that feel like something pulled straight out of your childhood, the indie gaming scene will absolutely do that for you. Just this past month, both Bomb Rush Cyberfunk and Sea of Stars released, both of which also feel like games that could have been released in 2003. They are wonderful little love letters to the kinds of video games that don't get made anymore. And they aren't unique in that respect, there are dozens of indie games like this getting released every single year. The difference with Armored Core 6 is that this is a game with triple A production values. It plays like a game from 20 years ago with the polish and technology of a game released in 2023. The movement in Armored Core 6 is so freaking smooth. The way these mechs move through the environment is beautiful. Leaping over buildings in this game feels so good. I also love that the vast majority of enemies you encounter in this game don't pose any threat to me at all. I'm piloting what might as well be a freaking Death Star on wheels, just annihilating anything foolish enough to stumble within range of my twin laser cannons. It's stupid power fantasy and it's really fun. If Armored Core 6 was actually released in 2003, this game would still be just as cool but it would be a clunky piece of crap to play. It would have all these cool ideas but not have the technology or developer experience to actually pull them off in a smooth and playable way. But instead, it was released in 2023 and that means that everything works the way it should. From Software are absolute masters of the action genre. Armored Core 6 does have a lot of simple just go there and blow everything up type missions. But the game also has a ton of variety in the missions too. For example, there's this early mission where you scale a massive quadruped mining walker that's been transformed into a laser cannon wielding weapons platform. This is an entire mission where all you do is drop down a giant hole. The twist is that at the bottom of this hole is sitting a massive six-jointed spider laser cannon, whose only purpose in life is to fry anything that attempts to descend into this abyss. It's a different sort of mission where you're not mowing down hordes of little robots. Instead, you have to move carefully, jump from safe spot to safe spot. Not only does this add some variety to the game, but it's also exactly the kind of simple challenge I would expect to find in an action platformer game released on the PlayStation 2. This game even has an escort mission. I can't even remember the last time I played a AAA game with an escort mission. We all hated escort missions, they were so annoying. But you know what? With a bit of modern polish and technology and an aggressive play style, this mission was actually pretty fun. The game even has a little awkward clunky stealth missions too. It's like I'm playing Time Splitters again. It was absolutely hilarious. Sneaking around with my massive lumbering laser battle tank hiding behind buildings as if anything could actually hide this freaking technological leviathan that I'm piloting. 
So much of my time with Armored Core 6 felt like I was delving into a sort of gaming time capsule, picking through crude relics from an age of simpler technology, smaller budgets, and smaller expectations, and I loved it. Something else I've got to mention is the level design. The levels here are so vertical, so layered, with an environment of hills and cliffs and canyons and skyscrapers and megalithic shattered technology. There is so much variety to each individual environment, and because your mechs move so smoothly, navigating that environment can be a joy, especially when you're blasting away at little baby robots with your machine guns and bazookas at the same time. And this game looks gorgeous without pushing graphics technology to its absolute limits. I've thought for a long time that AAA video games really don't need to look as good as they do. Like, I don't need God of War and Horizon to be the best looking games I've ever seen in my life. I don't need for games to constantly up the ante visually, especially if it means that it takes video games like half a decade to finish development. Development times and budgets for AAA games have gotten completely insane, and a big part of that is because gamers demand these games come with both massive open worlds and ridiculous graphics, and Armored Core 6 doesn't have either of those. The game looks really good, but not because its technical graphics are the most impressive that we've seen this year. Like, look at these little cars. They're not all that detailed. If you look closely, they look like little blocky pieces of garbage. But Armored Core 6 has such a great art style. Like, these backgrounds are awesome. The world of Rubicon is such a cool, futuristic wasteland. A planet which once held some of the most advanced technology in the galaxy, but which was utterly destroyed in a freak and mysterious fiery disaster. And now all that megalithic technology litters the landscape, burnt out, falling apart, forgotten, become the makeshift homes of hardened scavengers and corporate vultures. A fantastic art style and creative setting lifts this game above a lot of its peers. Final Fantasy 16 might be a technically more impressive game, but I think Armored Core 6 is actually much more visually interesting. From Software has always chosen great art styles over technically great graphics. And that has served them well. Elden Ring is another game that I think looks fantastic, with some of the most visually compelling environments I've ever seen in a fantasy game. And it did that without pushing graphics technology to their absolute limit. That's a reason why I still love Nintendo so much too. They focus on gameplay and polish and creativity over technical splendor. Like Tears of the Kingdom looks identical to Breath of the Wild, and I don't care because the gameplay is fantastic and the art style is gorgeous anyway. Sometimes I'll see comments on videos for these games that say things like, Oh, it doesn't look as good as blah 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 blah. It looks like a PS2 game blah 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 blah. Do you guys really want a video game industry made up of nothing but huge massive scale games with ridiculous graphics that take 10 years to develop and are so expensive to make that it becomes financially impossible for them to take any risks at all or be creative creative or do anything other than make another Ubisoft style checklist open world game. Or even worse, yet another online live service game that treats its players like pustule sacks of cash to be endlessly pumped for profits. Is that really what we want the entire AAA gaming landscape to look like? Because that is what you are asking for when you complain that not every single big budget game has the most amazing possible technical graphics. My dream is that the success of Armored Core 6 can convince other publishers and developers that we don't need ridiculous, bloated, incredible budgets in every single AAA game. We don't need every AAA game to be a massive open world with a hundred different systems and mechanics piled on top of each other that takes a hundred hours to complete complete. Players do want games that have both focus and big enough budgets. We want games that choose gameplay over graphics and fun over profits and still have AAA polish. We are fine with traditional mission structures in our games, and we like missions with simple objectives. We are fine with a AAA game that doesn't push the graphics as far as they can possibly go. We like a good art style just as much as we like shorter development times. We like smaller budgets, which means developers can take greater risks and be more creative and get games 
out faster. We want more games like Armored Core 6. Even if you don't enjoy Armored Core 6 specifically, you should want more games like Armored Core 6. It's good for the video game industry's ecosystem. If I had any criticism of the game, it's that I've really stopped enjoying the way From Software designs their bosses. Since around the time of Bloodborne's Old Hunters DLC, From Software boss design has become all about creating these super fast enemies, flying all over the place who spew out magic and bullets in all directions, so there's nowhere to dodge and you're just being overwhelmed by their speed and attacks and damage output constantly. Every time I encounter a boss in this game, it's like running into a brick wall. Every time I reach another boss, I'm like, oh geez, another one of these. There are a couple bosses that I think have designs that are much more fun to tackle, like this big slow worm boss that has a very small and hard to hit weak point. Instead of dodging 7,000 missiles and bullets and laser swords for a three minute long blast fest, this is a longer battle where a lot of patience is required. It's all about timing and positioning, which I find to be far more enjoyable. But I know I'm in the minority with this opinion. Everyone else I see keeps talking like, Woo, I love getting my butt kicked over and over. Woohoo, so much fun. But man, I find these bosses to be so tedious at times. I don't know if it's getting older or what, but I just don't feel like fighting the same boss 10 times in a row anymore. I don't care about getting good anymore. I got good in your last 10 games. Now I just want to have fun. But again, I recognize that this is less of a criticism and more of a personal preference. The one thing I haven't discussed much yet in this video is the game's story. Armored Core 6 actually has a lot more story than I was expecting it to. It's definitely a game that focuses on gameplay. I mean, it barely has any cutscenes. It doesn't have a single character whose actual human face ever appears on screen, but it does manage to cram a surprising amount of story into those little spaces between missions. It has what I would describe as a very efficient story. It fits a lot of story into little snippets into the mission briefings, into a little bit of dialogue during the missions, and what little is there is actually really compelling. It's a morally gray story without clear heroes or villains. It's a story that lets you make choices, and no matter which choice you make, you will have to betray a friend. In the final missions, I actually felt some pretty strong emotions. I didn't really want to be fighting who I was fighting. I've already discussed it some, but I really dig the setting here. Rubicon is a fascinating plan a post-apocalyptic world. It's contaminated wastelands and abandoned cities a testament to both man's greed and fear. You get to delve into the mysteries of this planet, very literally dig down into the sins of its past. Just like the Souls games, Armored Core 6 does a really good job of setting up historical mysteries, of crafting a seemingly unreal setting you will want to explore. And this is a good place to discuss Armored Core 6's New Game Plus mode. Your second and third playthroughs of this game are going to feel a lot different from your first playthrough, especially from a story perspective. Not only does New Game Plus introduce new missions, like almost a whole game's worth of new missions, but it also introduces new characters, new plot lines, new mysteries, and a whole new villain. When I first beat Armored Core 6, I immediately started a second playthrough, and was rewarded for it. And then I jumped right back in for a third time, and was rewarded even more. I haven't done that in a game in a long time. But Armored Core 6's simple style, relatively short campaign, and extensive customization options all lend themselves really well to multiple playthroughs. And I will, of course, be posting a bunch of video essays about the story this month, analyzing how the heroes and villains and setting were written. So if you're interested in the story, look forward to those. In the meantime, I think Armored Core 6 represents a really promising future for AAA gaming, a kind of return to our roots, a AAA gaming landscape with smaller budgets, more focused games, and more creative gameplay. Video games that look and play like the games of a decade or two ago, but with the technology and the polish of today. 